Memory only becomes interesting through its struggle with forgetfulness. Remember that. If you're anything like me, you've probably asked yourself, what's the point of reading through textbooks, taking notes, and testing yourself on information that you're just gonna forget a couple of days later? The other frustrating thing is, we can often recall some of the information when we test ourselves immediately after reviewing it, which makes us think we know it. Then a day or two later, it's all gone. In this video, we'll dive into how to make information stick in your long-term memory right up to exam day. First things first, before you commit something to memory, you need to be using the most effective technique to recall the information in the first place. I'd recommend you check out Active Recall and arm yourself with some top techers for exam domination. If you don't know what Active Recall is, you should check out another video I've made where I give you seven different Active Recall techniques you can use, and I've linked this video in the description below. Once you're doing Active Recall as part of your revision sessions, the technique which is going to allow you to properly solidify the information in your long-term memory for the exam is called spaced repetition. This concept is based on the forgetting curve. All you need to know about this graph is two things. The curve shows how information is forgotten over time when no attempt is made to recall or review it. The curve also shows we forget the majority of information in the time shortly after having reviewed something. Glad we got that one out of the way. I used to find graphs pretty tricky at school. I'd just stare at it and hope to take it in some way. A good tip to understand them is in the way you approach it. Always start with what the x and y axis represent and then things become a lot easier. It sounds obvious, but I know I had that problem. The two actions we need to take based on this information about the forgetting curve are, we need to interrupt the forgetting curve because every time we interrupt it, we're going to get that refreshed memory spike in the graph. We also need to start out with our repetitions closer together and then space them out gradually because we know we forget most of the information shortly after we've reviewed it the first couple of times. As we review more and more, the rate at which we forget decreases, therefore allowing for longer gaps between review sessions. Or to explain it another way, see your brain like a hard drive. There's only so much storage space before old stuff needs to be deleted to accommodate for more new stuff. When we do space repetition, we are taking the old stuff and compressing it into information our processor can retrieve more easily and doesn't take up as much space on the drive. The more you review over time, the more efficient your processor will become at making full use of the space on your hard drive. And the great thing about this metaphor is it also works to explain why the opposite of spaced repetition, cramming, doesn't work when you have lots of information to remember. When you cram, your hard drive quickly fills up and you don't have time to compress this information into a more easily retrievable and smaller format because you only get to review the information once or twice before the exam. So now we know how spaced repetition works, let's look at three easy ways you can put this into practice for everything you need to study for your exams. Number one, make a spaced repetition spreadsheet. Each one of your exams can be broken down into different topics. Write all the topics you need to know down the left side of a spreadsheet. Then along the top, write out a row of individual dates. The first step is to set dates when you're gonna review the topic for the first time. Make notes on it and give yourself a quick test using Active Recall. Mark this with a one to signify the first review or repetition. After you've reviewed for the first time, mark with green, orange, or red how well you did on the mini test you gave yourself at the end of the revision session. This dictates when your next revision session on this topic should be. Reds should be done sooner, greens, they can wait until later. The more reviews for each topic you can do, the better. The aim is for the color of your spreadsheet to change from red to green over time and for the spacing of the sessions to become further and further apart as you begin to remember the information. And so you don't need to refresh it in your memory as often. And here are two additional tips. You can make a separate spreadsheet for each subject you have an exam on within the same document. Remember to make a backup though, unless you're using spaced repetition to memorize the spreadsheet itself. In that case, you're an exam beast, well played. Also, if there's a topic that's particularly likely to come up because it's fundamental to the overall understanding of the subject, or examiners often write questions on that topic, or it's just likely to have a high mark weighting, color the topic blue on your spreadsheet. So you know that if you're at a loose end one day, 
that's the topic you should review. The second way of using spaced repetition is a system using flashcards. Using sticky notes create a timeline of dates spaced further and further apart. Write your flashcards and place them all under the first sticky note. Test yourself on the cards using active recall. Scan the card, then try and recall the information without assistance. If you get it right, move it to the next sticky note. If you get it wrong, it goes back to the first review sticky note no matter where it was in the system. This way you're gonna get a good idea of what you do and don't know, and you're spacing out your repetitions in a way that recognizes this. This will help you remember the information you need to know all the way up to exam day. The third and perhaps most convenient way to use spaced repetition in your exam revision is to use an app on your smartphone. There are tons of apps out there which allow you to make your own digital flashcards using images to help support your visual memory. These are great for quick facts, quotes, definitions, or bullet-pointed responses to questions whilst on the move. I've listed a whole load of apps in the description below for you to take a look at, but here's a quick overview of three I'd recommend for you. First is Anki. The main benefit with Anki is you can rate how hard it was for you to recall the answer on a digital flashcard, and then Anki will serve you that flashcard again through its spaced repetition algorithm. Cards that you mark as difficult are gonna be seen more often, cards that you mark as less difficult are going to be seen less often. You should also check out Quizlet. This has many different pre-made flashcard sets you can test yourself on, and it has its own spaced repetition system to ensure it's serving you cards you may not know. And finally, I'd recommend Gojimo. Though it's not set up for spaced repetition in the same way as the previous two apps, if you're taking exams in the UK, this app is made specifically for those and the exam boards which run them. It's great because of the detail it goes into. You can target your revision practice by subject, exam board, and module. You can always do the spaced repetition cycles manually by regularly revisiting the app. To get the most out of these apps, I'd recommend you strike a balance between creating your own flashcards and using the sets already on them. You're always gonna have a greater understanding if you're creating information in a way which makes sense to you, that you understand, but it's still gonna be marked as correct in the exam. If you found this video informative, give it a like down below. Any questions, stick them in the comments. If you want more videos like this on exam preparation, smartphone management, and career planning, subscribe. And don't forget, if you haven't watched the video on Active Recall yet, check it out. I'm checking out.